Well, my, my subject tonight is about the Holy Spirit. Amen? Ito po ay tungkol sa banal na Espiritu. At ako po yung naniniwala that the Holy Spirit plays a very vital and important role in a Christian life. Amen? At unawa, unawa, unawain po natin ito dahil I believe that the Holy Spirit is one of the powerhouse of our life as a Christian. At simulan ko po ang ating pong pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. I will first prepare Like, uh, I will prepare the groundwork bago po tayo umabot do sa ating pumpik, sa ating pag-aaral sa Banal na Espiritu. As I said, I was asking the Lord kanina pong umaga and I said, Lord, where do you want me to begin studying the Holy Spirit? And you know what? The Lord told me to go back in the book of Genesis. Amen? To go back to the book of Genesis because in the book of Genesis, you will understand what is the role of the Holy Spirit. Alam niyo po, when I was in the Bible school, I was... I was taught by one of my professor about this this kind of law when you handle the the word of God. Sa pagbabasa po at pag-aaral na salita ng Diyos, mayroon pong tinatawag na prinsipyo na I found it very effective and it's called the law of first mention. Amen. So, medyo alam ko po na medyo makukulture sa kayo sa akin because uh, you know my dad is more of a energetic, amen. And the same with my brother Kenneth, amen. It's like lagi tayong nasa kampanya, amen. Go, 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 amen. But this time, I will, I will bring you to a class, amen. Kaya sabihin mo sa iyong katabi, mag-aaral muna tayo. Amen, amen. And uh, I believe for some, it's boring, amen. Dahil sabi ni ba, matanda na kami, pastor. Bakit mo pa kami pinag-aaral? Well, it's good for you. Amen. Do you know the value of studying the Word of God? Amen. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Let me start it here. Amen. Puntahan po natin. Let's go to the book of 2 Timothy and let's listen to Paul. Nung, tinuro, nung siya po ay uh, sumulat sa lalaking, ang pangalan ay si Timoteo. I'd just like to encourage you the value of studying the Word of God. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. <clears throat> Now, if you are in the book of 2 Timothy tonight, I'll be using more King James Version. So buksan po natin sa verse 15. If you have your Bibles, please do turn your Bibles with you sa 2 Timothy chapter 2 and let me direct you to verse 15 now. Amen? So kung wala po kayong Biblia, that's okay. Amen? Yan po ang ganda ng ating panahon. Technology is available. Amen? So sabi po sa talatang 15, ano po sa talatang 15, sabi po ni Pablo na sulatan po niya si Timoteo, ang sabi po niya, he said this very powerful words, he said to Timothy, study. Amen? So salita pong Tagalog, ano po yung salitang study? Sa salita pa kasimple po, mag-aral. Amen? And he said, ang sabi po niya, study to show thyself approved unto God. One day, as I, was, as I was reading this passage in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, I stopped and paused for a while and I said, God, why did Paul said to Timothy, study? And then the next words that came out from Paul to Timothy is he said, to show thyself approved unto God. And I said, God, what's the connection of my studying showing myself approved to you? Amen? So, ating unawa yung natating pansin yun, sabi ko, God, I want this thing to be plain. Amen? So that I can easily understand the value of studying. At doon ko po naunawa na when you study, it's so simple. Pag pinag-aaralan mo po ang salita ng Diyos, do you know that the Word of God is God Himself? Amen? Ang sabi po ng John chapter 1 verse 1, ang sabi po ron, in the beginning, John said, the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And you just drop down to verse 14, ang sabi ng John 1 14, and that Word, the same context, amen, ang sabi, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, Amen. And ang sabi po ron, if you continue, ni-reveal po dyan, who is it? Dahil ang sabi po ng verse 14, full of grace and truth, and later on, it will not go there anymore, ang sabi po doon, the name of that word himself is Jesus. Amen? So, in other words, to, to make it plain and simple, the word of God is Jesus himself. Hello? So, now, there's now a connection why Paul said to Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, study. So it's so simple enough to understand that when you study the Word of God, you are showing to God that you are interested in Him. But if you don't study the Word of God, it just shows that you are not interested in God. Hello? Amen? Alam niyo po, relationship is what God wants from us and it's not a religion. 
In a relationship, isa pong napakahalaga, very vital sa relationship po, is you're interested with the person that you are in relation with. Kung kayo po ay binata, madali pong mahulaan. O oh, dalaga pala, I'm sorry. Kung kayo po ay dalaga, one tip that I can give to those that are still single and desiring to be married and there is somebody courting you, may nangliligaw sa inyo. One tip na malalaman mong interesado yung lalaki pagka inaalam niya yung mahalaga sa iyo. If he is interested in what is important to you, it means that he is interested with you. Pero yung pangalan mo, pag nakakalimutan, you have to think twice or maybe thrice. Hello? And the words, I love you, is not enough. Hello? Amen? Well, to tell you this, this is also our relationship with God. We need to be interested with God because your God is interested with you. Hello? Because the Bible said that even the numbers of your hair, the hairs on your head are numbered. It shows that your God is so much interested with you. But the opposite, the thing is, your, yours is the opposite because you are, it seems like we are not all interested with God. And you might be asking, Pastor, how can I show that I am interested with God? Then that's the word. Go to the word of God. Hello? Eh, Pastor, nagsisimba naman po ako eh. Ako naman po yung ma-attend ng church eh. Now, you are in a religion. Hello? Going to church doesn't prove that you are interested with God. I'm not saying that going to church is not good, but it's not enough. Hello? Amen? Hindi ko po sinasabing hindi po mahalaga ang pumupunta sa simbahan, but it's not enough. That's good, but that's not enough. Don't get me wrong. Amen? Because at the point in your life, what you do in your 24 hours, do you read the Word of God? Do you meditate the Word of God? Do you study God? And when you show your interest to the Word of God, you are showing interest in God Himself. And ang sabi ni Pablo, you are showing thyself approval to God. Eh, balikan po natin yung ating pinag-aaralan. Let's go back so that we will not be dragged into other issues in the Word of God tonight. We just got to be centered dito po sa ating subject and it's about the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, in the book of Genesis, kanina ko po lamang, I'll tell you, this is so fresh. I was just driving a while ago and I said, God, what do you want me to speak tonight? Then go back to Genesis, son. Now, in the book of Genesis chapter 1, Nabanggit ko po sa inyo kanina yung salitang the law of first mention. One of the things that I've learned in handling the word of God, if you can understand the book of Genesis, you can understand almost everything in the Bible. Why? Because that's the law of first mention. What's the, what, what do you mean, Pastor? Masyadong theological ata, law of first mention. Because God is not changing. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. When God introduced Himself from the beginning, He is the God in every generation that introduced Himself from the beginning. Amen? Kaya marami pong tao, they get lost because they are trying to change God and God is not changing. He is forever the same. Amen? Let me, let me give you an example. Meron pong isang issue sa, sa body of Christ and it's called tithing. I'm touching on this. Pastor, I thought, on subject, a Holy Spirit. Let me, let me just use this as an illustration tonight. What do you mean by the law of first mention? I believe that if you're a follower of this ministry, karamihan sa inyo, you are now, you are more educated about tithing because my dad is a tithing preacher. Tama po ba? The same with my brother. Mahilig po magturo ng tithe siguro yung mga yan eh. I'm not saying it's wrong, amen? But today, I would like to help you. I'm not saying it's not enough, but I would like to help you so that you would understand from the beginning what is tithes all about. There's a debate today. Na sinasabi nila that tithing is not already practiced in the New Testament because it's under the Old Covenant. It's under the law. Well, for, our, for your information, in the book of Genesis, the first persons, actually there are three, the persons, the first persons that practice tithing is number one is Abel, number two is Cain, and number three is Abraham. 
Do you know that? And what interests me is this. Nung binasa ko po itong paghahandog nilang ito, nobody taught them about this thing, but they just do it anyway. Amen? Hindi po sinabi ng Diyos that, Abraham, I want you to pay your tithes. Hindi po sinabi ng Diyos kay Abel, Abel, I'm commanding you, you are obliged to pay your tithes because you, you benefited from what you're doing on the fruit of your ground. But God never send a word. God never say a word about offering and about tithing. If you would consider Abraham, except nung una po siyang nag sa isang lalaki na ang pangalan ay Melchizedek, Amen. Abraham never heard about the message of tithing. But kung bakit po siya nag-ikapo is because he went from a he went out from a war dahil nagkaroon po siya ng isang tinatawag na rescue operation sa kanyang nephew na ang pangalan ay si Lot that during those time was Sodom and Gomorrah was under siege. And Abraham made a supernatural rescue operation without any military training. And the, to cut this long story short, he won the war and the Bible is clear that he recovered everything. Take note of that, church. He recovered everything. And I, I was looking at the Word of God and I said, that's only in a day Abraham became rich. Bakit po? Dahil yung yaman ng Sodom and Gomorrah, yung yaman ng mga naroroon, napunta lahat yung kay Abraham. Amen. At pagkatapos mo ni Abraham na magawa ito, here comes Melchizedek. At doon ko po napagtanto, every time that God blesses you, here comes God teaching you tithing. <laughs> Sabi mo sa iyong katabi, siguro may pinagpala rito, kinakausap ng Diyos. <laughs> Amen. Ngayon, pagdating po ni Melchizedek doon, Melchizedek made Abraham to understand this principle. Ang sabi po ni Melchizedek kay Abraham, you know Abraham, it's not you, it's not the reason, it's not you, you're strong, you're mighty, and etc. Kaya ka nagtagumpay. Ano sabi ni Melchizedek? Sabi niya, it is because God had already given you the victory. Then when Abraham realized, nung naunawaan ni Abraham, that the reason why he is so successful is because God is doing His mighty works, Anong ginawa po ni Abraham? Ang sabi ng Bible, immediately, he paid his tithes. Right? Amen? The same with Abel and Cain. Sabi po ng Bible, after na sila po yung mag-ani, then all of a sudden, sabi, they come to a place, they make an, a, a, an altar, they offer them to God the fruit of their ground. So I was thinking, what is the purpose of offering and tithing? Now, the purpose of offering and tithing is the same. It's not about the law. It's not about you obeying God, but it's you honoring God in everything you do. At doon po natutunan na many people are not benefiting from tithing because they are not doing tithing in the essence of honor. Be sure that when you give unto God, your heart motive is your honoring God. And how can you check that you are in the position of honoring God? Ito po isang ma- ma- ito po na determine ko po sa akin buhay. Excited ka bang magbigay? Amen. Kaya pala sabi ni Pablo, God loves a cheerful giver. Yung tipong hindi ka na makapag-intay ng linggo, you are so excited giving to God what you have in your hands. And that's the time that you are honoring God. So, tithing is not about the law. God is not holding you back. But the purpose of tithing is for you honoring God. And when you honor God with your blessings, then God will honor you. Amen? 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 So, that is the law first mentioned. That's just an example. So balikan po natin, let's go back to the Holy Spirit. Now in Genesis chapter 1, puntahan po natin yung Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Let's just put this on the screen. Ang sabi po ng verse 1, let's read, ang sabi, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Amen? So just allow me to help you in here. Amen? So ang sabi po sa verse 1, In the beginning... God created. You see the word created there. Amen? Ano po yung created sa English word? It is past tense. Amen? Always, also remember this 
uh, brothers and sisters, Bible or words. What do you mean, pastor? Ano po ibig sabihin ng Bible or words? Meaning to say, every words that you read is important. You don't drop, you don't edit, because if you do that, you miss the, tr- you miss the truth. Watch this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What is happening in verse 1 is the world. Let me ask you this question. Tanungin ko po kayo. Dito po ba sa verse 1, chapter 1, is the earth already created? Hmm? Yes or no? Amen. Who says yes? Raise your hands. Who says no? Who says, wala akong pakialam sa'yo. Bilisan mo na. Hello? Amen. Ang tawag po doon ay passive Christianity. I don't want to be a passive Christian. I want to know. Hello? Amen. So, ang sabi po sa verse 1, in the beginning, God created. If you say yes, you're right. It's already done. Amen? So, the earth was already there. Verse 1. But if you drop down to verse 2, something is happening here. Now, the earth was without, what does the Bible say? Was without form and void. What is the word void? The word void is, it's already destroyed or void. You see the word warranty is void. Amen? Ibig sabihin, tapos na. Sira. Amen? So, pansinin po natin, ang sabi, now the earth was without form and void. Do you see the contrast in verse 1? Ang sabi ng verse 1, the earth was created but when you drop down to verse 2, all of a sudden, the earth was without form. Something is happening here. Amen? So, meron po nangyayari rito. But I don't, hindi ko na po kayo dadalhin sa mas malalim, baka sumakit ang ulo. Eh. Ano po? So, let me just drop a little idea that in between verse 1 and verse 2, something happened here. Because as sabi ng verse 1, the earth was there, already done. But when you drop to verse 2, the earth was destroyed. So at the middle of verse 1 and 2, there's a gap of time. Something happened. Let me just give you a tip. If you are interested in knowing the Word of God, which you, you need to be doing, may mga, ang una kong tanong nung una, when I read these verses, chapter 1, then we, and I go to Genesis chapter 3, Uy, nalito noong una, sabi ko, binasa ko from verse 1, Genesis 1, I don't see any Satan there. Pero bakit pagdating sa Genesis chapter 3, then there was a Satan? Saan so, ito nang galing? I can't answer that. Amen? Hindi ko maintindihan kung paano ko sasagutin. And I begin to ask God. I said, God, help me here because if I will not have this answer, I could be deceived. And you know the problem with deception? The problem with deception, it will lead you to unbelief. Hello? Amen? Amen? Kaya, ang sabi ko, Panginoon, help me on this. Amen? At doon ko po naunawaan, but I don't have lots of time to sp- explain everything to you, that something happened in Genesis 1, the earth was already there, but because there is a rebellion, I can went to sa book of Isaiah, sa book of Ezekiel, that involves Satan and his souls, Narito sila sa ibabaw ng lupa, sinira ng Diyos ang daigdig. Because of dark, because of evil. Amen. Now, when you continue reading in Genesis 1 verse 2, if, you, if you're using your Bible again, law first mention, this is the first mention of the Spirit of God ever in the Bible. Hello? Amen. Amen. Don't lose me. I'm coming from something else. So, dito po unang binanggit ang Spirito ng Diyos. This is the first reference. Dahil, wala, may nabasa po ba kayo sa verse 1 about the word Spirit? I believe there's none. So, in verse 2, dito po unang nabanggit ang Spirito ng Diyos. And the Spirit here, when it was mentioned, ang sabi po ng Bible, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, meaning to say, the earth here is there, but the problem without form, sira, 
Balut ng kadiliman and watch the words again. And sabi upon the face of the deep, meaning the earth is under water. So there must be a flood. So the flood of Noah was not the first one. Sabi mo sa yung katabi, ayoko na nito. Hindi, nakikita ko, masyado kayong serious eh. Hello? Amen? You know, Bible is very interesting. You can get addicted to it if you have that revelation. Amen? So ano po nangyayari sa daigdig? Ang sabi ng Biblia, it's underwater, church. Amen? So meaning, it's all destroyed, it's all messed up. And here comes the word, ang sabi, the Spirit of God. So, now, as I was going back here kanina, as I was driving, I stopped. Literally, I stopped. I don't have my iPad, I get my phone, and I look at it. Amen? And there comes revelation that the first ministry of the Holy Spirit is repair everything that was destroyed. He was involved in repairing things that have been destroyed by evil. Hmm. Hello? Amen? Amen? So the Holy Spirit is always involved in restoration. There will never be a restoration without the presence of the Holy Spirit. No restoration. No repair. Because the Holy Spirit is the one behind every restoration. Mm. Hello? Now watch this. Now, Adam was the first man that was created by God. Is that correct? Now, the reason why Adam became alive here on earth and in the Spirit, not because he is independent. Why is he alive? Because the Bible in Genesis 2 said, God breathed into him the life. Hello? So what makes us different from animals? Ano po ang kaibahan ng tao sa hayop? We are dependent on our maker. Hello? Kaya I don't like the word independence. Hello? Amen. Why? Because God always wants us to be dependent on Him. But the world is trying to create a world of independent people. And if we're not being careful, we are going to also be independent with God. And if we are independent with God, then Houston, we have a problem. Sayo mo sa yung katabi, hindi ko kayang wala ang Diyos. Hello? Amen? Adam was no, he has no life without God because it is only God that gives him life. Amen? Amen? Kaya sabi ni, I don't need God. God have mercy on you. Pero kung ikaw po ay hayop, then you can go on. But if you consider yourself as a human being, then you need God. Sabi mo sa iyong katabi, kailangan mo ang Diyos. <laughs> Amen? So watch this. Now go to Genesis 2. I will try to point to you something here. Go to Genesis 2. Hallelujah. Genesis 2. Let's go to Genesis 2. Remember, this is all this is all about the law of first mention. First thing that we encountered in the Holy Spirit, what is it? He is the restorer of everything that was broken. Amen. Amen. So if you need to fix your life, you need the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you need to fix your family, you need the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's move on. And sabi po dito sa Genesis 2, let's go to verse 7, King James. And sabi po ng Genesis 2. And sabi po sa verse 7, and sabi, And the Lord God formed men of the dust of the ground. Who formed men? God. Amen. So, sampu niya inanyo ang tao. Sabi ng Bible, from the ground. And the Bible is very clear. Kaya pag namamatay po ang tao, bumabalik tayo saan? Sa alabok. That's, that's one of the proof that the Bible is true. Amen? But notice something. Ang sabi po rito, after the man was formed from the dust of the ground, did you see the word end? Meaning to say, if you pause from that word ground, 
nothing is happening until God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. That's Zoe. And that's life. So, saan po galing ang buhay ng tao? Galing sa Diyos and you see the word, man now became what? A living soul. So, nabuhay po ang tao because God made him alive. Amen? So, sino po ang dahilan kung bakit buhay ang tao? Ang Diyos. But watch this, ang sabi po sa Genesis 2, ang sabi po sa Genesis 2, Set ko lang po yung akin because I'm not there. Genesis 2. You just go to verse 17 or verse 16. Let's back up from verse 16, please. And sabi po sa Genesis 2.16. Let's pick it up there. Genesis 2.16. Pansinin po natin yung Genesis 2.16. Let's read. And the Lord God, and sabi po rito, commanded the man. Sabi niya po natin, commanded. commanded. Inuutosan po daw ng Diyos alin ang tao. Amen. Which is Adam, of course. Ang sabi po rito ng Diyos kay Adan, saying of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat, but if you drop down verse 17, ang sabi, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, what did God say? Thou shalt surely die. Amen. So, ano po sabi ng Diyos? Pag ito'y sinuway mo, pag hindi mo ito ginawa, pag ito po'y binaliwala mo, ang sabi ng Diyos kaya Dan, then the moment you do it, you die. Meaning to say, you will, you are a relationship. Amen? Amen? Because God and humans were designed to be related to each other. But because of this obedience, ano po nangyari? Ang sabi po, you know the story in Genesis 3 nang ma-commit po ni Adan at ni Eva ang bagay na ito, what did happen to them? Ang sabi po ng Bible, they die. Bakit po sila namatay? Physically, they were alive. But now, life in their existence became hard. Why? Because that is the proof that life without God will always be hard. Hello? Amen? So anything that you do something without God, it will be hard. You are, you'll be working your, your, your butts out if you allow me to use that word. But it will be hard without God. Gagawin mong isang bagay na wala ang Diyos mahirap. But if you do things with God, even though it's hard in your understanding, but it would be easy because God will always make a way. Hello? Amen? So life without God is always hard. Sabi mo sa iyo katabi, ang buhay na walang Diyos, mahirap. Amen? Amen? Don't engage in business or in anything without God. Be sure that in everything you do, your God is always with you. Hello? Dahil pag wala po ang Diyos, you will always use your strength. But if God is there, it will not be your might. It will not be your strength. But it is the Spirit of God working in your affairs in this life. Amen? Amen. So, nung makumit po ni Adam ang bagay na ito, he was now separated with God. Amen? Sa po ay napalayo ngayon sa Diyos. And ang sabi po ng Biblia, now, he died, but naturally, he's still alive. But what happened here is, sabi po kasi, if you go back do sa kanina, sa Genesis 2, we're still there pala. Ang sabi po sa verse 17, when you do this, you'll die. Meaning to say, I will leave you. I will leave you. I cannot work with you. Why? Bakit po lumayo ang Diyos dito kay Adan? Because now Adam is in sin, and God cannot work with sin. Pero ano po bang kasalanan na nagawa ni Adan? We all know na kinain po niya yung bunga ng pinagbabawal na puno. Tama po ba? But do you know what's really the score kung bakit po si Adan ay nagkaroon ng problema sa Diyos? Amen. Do you know what it is? Now let me let me direct you now to Romans. Let's go to to Romans first. Oh, before Romans, let's thank you, Lord. Puntahan po muna natin yung Hebrews 3. I believe we, we need to go to Hebrews 3 first before we go to Romans 14. Hebrews 3, para po maintindihan natin what did Adam really committed here. Hebrews 3, puntahan po natin yung Hebrews 3. If you're there, go to verse 12. 
What happened in the, in the garden is here. Ano po ang sabi sa 3.12? Let's read. Ang sabi ni, some theologians said it is Paul, but some do not agree that it is Paul, but doesn't matter. But let's read. Amen. Ang sabi po sa verse 12, Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart. What? An evil heart. How can a person have an evil heart? Paano nagkakaroon ng evil heart ang isang tao? Is it because he says something bad against me? Dahil ba siya ay minura ako? Meron siyang ginawang masama? But what is the Bible says about an evil heart? When you do not believe in God. Hello? Amen? So how can you fall into the category of having an evil heart when you are in unbelief? What happened to people when they are in unbelief? And some people, you are departing from the living God. Is that what happened to Adam? He doubted the words of God. And when he doubted the word of God, he did not realize that he is now departing from God. Kaya pag nag-aalilangan ka sa pangako ng Diyos, you are not aware, but what is happening to you, you are departing from God. Kaya I have a suggestion to make to you tonight. Don't have an unbelief in your heart because if you do, you are departing away from God. Hello? Yeah, when you read the word, pag nabasa mo salita ng Diyos, the Lord will provide for you. The thing that you can do is do not doubt, just believe. I agree, God, even though I don't understand it, but I agree with you. Why? Because the moment you disagree and doubt with the word of God, you're departing from His presence. Hello? And now we go to Romans 3 now. Punta po tayo sa Romans. For, uh, sorry, 14. Sorry for the wrong scripture. Romans 14. What does the Bible say about unbelief? Let go to, let's go to Romans 14, 23 now. Let's read, And he that doubted is damned. And if he eat, and if he eat because he eateth not of faith, not of faith meaning of unbelief. Look at the last words. For whatsoever is not of faith, what is it? What is it? Faith. Mahina po. What is it? Faith. Amen. Naniniwala ka bang sabi ng salita ng Diyos, by His wounds you are healed? Faith. Naniniwala ka ba sa salita ng Diyos that if you are in Christ, the curse has been removed. You are already moved from curse to blessing. Pero pag sinasabi mo, oh, paano nangyari yun? Now you, you're getting yourself into sin, friends. Amen? So ano po nangyari kay Adan the moment he committed eating in Genesis 3? He doubted. He act not in faith. And it's sin. What does Hebrew said about sin? You're departing from God. Hello? Amen? So ano po nangyayari? Lumalayo ka saan? Sa Diyos. So it gives us now an idea that to be closer to God is believing in His Word. The more you believe in His Word, the more you get closer to God. But the more you doubt, you're staying away from God. Now, yun nangyari po rito nga ngayon, now because of the presence of God now was removing Adam's life, life became hard. Tingnan nyo po ngayon, it's law first mentioned. Tingnan nyo po ngayon na nangyayari sa all throughout the history. Let me use the one example. I will not lead you there because I'm, I'm working on a limited time. There's a man named Samson in the Bible. Old Testament. Do you know Samson? See, Samson po was chosen by God to be one of the judges in his generation. Ngayon si Samson, habang sa po'y naroon, he was working in God, in what God wants him to do. Pero nagkaroon po siya ng disobedience, right? Pina, binigay po niya yung sekreto, ginupit niya yun ni Delilah yung kanyang buhok, na alala ko tuloy, I don't know if you're, if, kung kayo po ay kasama, matagal na nakikinig sa aking ama, bago po ito naging tinig ng kanyang pagbabalik eh, 1980s pa ang pangalan ni eh, Ran Samson Ran. Sino rito nakikinig na nung panahon yun? 
Eh, isa na lang, ibig sabihin si Tita LD ang pinakabata nito. Eh, si Tita LD lang po pala ang nakarinig ng Ran Samson Ran. That was the first program I think, I believe that my dad has ever done. Amen. Ra? Sa akin pong pagkakaunawa. Amen. It's Ran Samson Ran. Isa po 'yun sa kanyang uh, ano at ang tito ang ang awit noon eh, hindi ko kilala umawit but I believe it's not a Christian song. Sabi Ran Samson Delilah is on Neil Sidaka pa, amen. So, hindi alam ni Neil Sidaka that his song was used for a gospel program. <laughs> amen. Praise God. Amen. Ayan, di po ba? Samson was so strong because the Spirit of God is working with him. But the moment there's disobedience found in Samson, what happened to him? He became weak. Why? Because the Spirit has left him. Another example in the Bible that I can tell you is, Saul or Saul, the king in the book of Samuel. Nung, alis, nung umalis po ang presensya ng Diyos kay Saul, what happened to Saul, to Saul was so worse and miserable. So it just shows that the Holy Spirit play a vital role in our success. Hello? Amen? Eh, makikita po natin sa pangyayaring ito, Adam was separated from God. Amen? Then, Samson experienced that. Then, si Saul, naranasan din po niya itong bagay na ito. Amen? Now, the Bible is clear in Romans 3. Now, we go, papunta po tayo ngayon sa bagong tipan. Sabi sa Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Amen? Let's read. Ang sabi for all, sabi mo sa iyong katabi, all daw. Pag sinabi pong all, mayroon po bang exempted? Wala, no? Lahat po ay kasali. Kaya pag sinabi mong hindi ka kasali, para mong sinabing hindi ka tao. Tingnan mo nga ang iyong katabi, tao ka ba? Kasama tayo dyan. Right? Amen? So ang sabi po sa 3.23, for all, have sinned. And what happened? What is the result of sin? The sin here in verse 23 was the sin that Adam committed that was passed to every generation of human. Amen? Pansinin po natin, kahit po ang isang bata from birth, wala pa po siyang nagagawang kasalanan, he's already a sinner. Why? Because there is such thing in the Bible called the law of Genesis that everything that has life within itself has the capability and power to produce after its own kind. Ano ibig sabihin ng pastor? Sabi kasi ng Diyos, I'm commanding every life to produce according to His life. Kaya nga po, nakakita ba kayo ng punong mangga na ang binunga ay buko? Nakakita po ba, nakabalita ba kayo ng aso ng mga anak ay daga ang anak? So what is, what is the product of every life being? They are producing after its own kind. So if the parents is a dog, then the product is a dog. If the tree is a mango, then the product is a mango tree. Why? It's producing after its own kind. So when Adam produced seeds, Adam is a sinner, then he's producing sinners. And sabi mo sa yung katabi, you came from Adam, so you were once a sinner. Amen? So sin is not only defined by what you do. That's a character of sin. But even if you don't do bad things, you're already a sinner. Hello? Amen. And sabi sa 3.23, for all have sinned. What happened now? We all come short from the glory of God. Meaning, we are all separated. Amen? Separated from God. There's no life. Amen? Walang buhay ang bawat isang tao na malayo sa Diyos. There's no life. Why? We can understand from the verse thing that we studied tonight, that the moment we sin, the Holy Spirit was taken away. But watch this now. Go to the book of John. Samahan niyo po ako sa John. Go to the Gospel of John and now let's hear from Jesus. Puntahan na po natin ang John 16. Samahan niyo po ako ngayong gabi. Let's go to John 16. Let me pick up from verse 7. Samahan niyo po ako sa verse 7. 
So from verse 7, I'll just pick it up here. I'll be using an amplifier. Hindi ko po alam kung may amplifier dito sa ating screen. But anyways, kahit po King James, let's just proceed. Amen? Sabi po ni Jesus, si Jesus po nagsasalita sa talatang pito. Ganito po ang kanya sinabi. Oh, meron. Good. Amen. Salamat, salamat. Ang sabi sa verse 7, let's read. That's amplified version. Ang sabi po ni Jesus, However, I am telling you nothing but the truth. So do you believe that Jesus always tells the truth? Amen. Amen. So when I say it is profitable, good, expedient, and advantageous. So ang sabi niya, ang aking sinasabi ay katotohanan at ito'y inyong pakikinabangan. It is for your good. Ang sabi niya, he's talking to his disciples here. Ang sabi ni Jesus, for you that I go away. Remember what's the issue here? Jesus is trying to prepare His disciple about His coming end. At ang isa sa pinakamahirap po sa mga may relasyon na nabuo ay ang paghihiwalay. Amen? So they, they are trying to, to prevent Jesus from not leaving them. Amen? At sila ay nalulungkot dito sa pangyayaring ito sa magiging senaryo na ito because you know, I realize that the only time that we felt na tayo po'y nalulungkot is because we do not understand what is going to happen in the future, right? But if we would understand what would happen in the future and if we see that the future is bright and good, then it's easy to let go. Amen? Kaya alam po nagiging mahirap sa atin ang pagpapasya dahil hindi natin alam ang inaharap. That's why we need to lean on God, to stay close to God because God knows our future. Amen? Amen? We don't know what will happen tomorrow. Hindi po natin alam ang mangyayari sa ating bukas. We don't even have an idea what will happen to us uh, one week from now or one month from now. But two, two months or a year from now, we do not know. But if you know the Word of God, and sabi ng Jeremiah 33, I know the plans that I have for you. And my plans, this is my, my version. And man, it is good. <laughs> Amen? It is good. Ang plano po ng Diyos ay laging maganda. Kaya kung minsan, pag may nawala, may nagsara, let it go. Because sometimes, yung mga humiwalay sa'yo at yung nang iwan sa'yo at yung mga nagsara, it's not good for you. But God will give you something that is better, that is good, and it will be always for your advantage. If you trust your father, do you trust your father? Nagtitiwala po ba kayo sa inyong mga magulang? I, I'm, I'm once, uh, I, I still have my father today. Pero alam niyo po, ako, ako po'y naniniwala that my, not only my father, is, damay ko po ang aking pinakamamahal na ina. So also my mom, I believe na wala po silang binalak na bagay na ikasisira na sa, ng kanilang mga anak. They, I don't even agree and believe that they have in mind to set me up for my failure. Amen? Wala pong magulang na matino, maayos, at may takot sa Diyos na nagtangka na ang kanilang anak ay iset up sa kabigo. I don't think so. Amen? Ano po ang laging pangarap ng mga magulang? To be good. To you to be successful. Eh kung ganyan po ang magulang natin at marunong dito sa lupa ang magulang na ganyan, lalo na po ang magulang natin sa langit. Kaya don't think any single moment in your life that God is working against you. Remember this. He is not against you. He is for you. Amen. Hello? Amen? Now let's go back. Ang sabi po rito, pa, nahihirapan po yung mga alaga dito because they do not know what's going on ahead. Amen? But Jesus said, nireveal po ni Jesus, bahagya. Sabi niya, you know that it would be for your advantage that I go away? Bakit po? Because if I do not go away, kung hindi raw po sa aalis, ano sabi ni Jesus? The Comforter, the, the New Testament say it this way, the Comforter, but the Comforter is the Holy Spirit. Amen? And sabi niya, if I do not go away, the Comforter... And what is the role of the comforter here? That's why I, I choose to read the Amplified. In expound po ni Amplified, yung word na comporter, he's a counselor. He's your helper. He is your advocate. 
He is your intercessor, strengthener, and standby. What do you mean by standby, Pastor? He's just standing by to help you and to bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you see the power of the Holy Spirit, the need of the Holy Spirit? Without the Holy Spirit, you will not have a counselor. You will not have a helper. The Holy Spirit is not working against you. He's there to help you. Amen. So ang sabi po rito, I cannot send you the comforter. Hindi ko may bibigay sa inyo ang banal na espirito. Amen? The comforter and will not come to you. What was the purpose of the Holy Spirit coming to you? Into clo close fellowship with you. Why is He coming to your life? He wants to fellowship with you. Amen? Amen? But if I go away, ang sabi ni Jesus, I will send Him to you. To be in close fellowship with you. Amen. So where is the Holy Spirit coming from? Watch this. Sabi niya, I will send. So the Holy Spirit will never come if Jesus will not send Him. Amen. So meaning to say, without Jesus, then the Holy Spirit cannot be given to you. Amen? So the procedure is this. Receive Jesus. Accept Jesus. Believe in Jesus. And once you receive Jesus, then the Holy Spirit is coming into your life. Hello? Amen? So don't be misled that persons without Jesus is filled or with the presence of the Holy Spirit because it is only Jesus has the power to send you the Spirit. Amen? Amen? Now, let's go now to verse 8. Ang sabi po sa verse 8, Jesus gives us now the idea. What is the function and the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Now, go to verse 8. John 16. And when the Holy Spirit, that's the word He, and when He comes, let's take, let's take, the, take the words. Ano po ang sabi? Number one. Enumerate the words. Let's take number one. What he will do? Number one, he will convict and convince the world. Bring demonstration to it about sin and about righteousness, uprightness of heart, and right standing with God, and about judgment. Amen? Okay, now, watch this. Sabi po ng Panginoong Esokristo, pag siya ay dumating na, there are three major things that the Holy Spirit will do in this world. Don't lose me here. This is, do you believe in Jesus? Naniniwala kayo kay Jesus? Naniniwala kayo talaga? Amen. So, you can doubt what I say. But if Jesus is now speaking, believe. Now watch this. Ang sabi po sa verse 8, When He comes, pag dumating daw po ang banal na Espiritu, Ano ang gagawin ni ang banal na Espiritu pag siya'y dumating? He will convict. Sabi pa nung isang translation, I believe it's in the King James, ang sabi, He will condemn. Can we try that? Pwede po ba natin tingnan yung verse 8? Reprove. Oh, sorry. Huwag na po tayong pumunta. The word reprove is like also condemn. Amen? So when He comes, He will convict and convince the world and bring demonstration to it about what? About sin. So ano raw po ang trabaho ng banal na Espiritu? Watch this. I have to be slow on this so that you can get what the Holy Spirit is doing. To the world. What is, do you mean by the world? The world means the unbelieving world. Amen? Yung mga tao na hindi po tinatanggap, sino? Ang Panginoon. That's why if you drop down to verse 9, Jesus begin explaining plainly about sin because they do not believe in me. So meaning to say, believing and trusting God will put you to remain in sin. Amen? Amen? Uh, not believing in God will put you in sin. Amen? Or in Jesus. Amen. It's not just what you do, but if you're not believer of Jesus, you will remain in sin. Amen? Nakukuha po ba natin? So, ang sabi po dito sa verse 9, the work of the Spirit, this is what He will do to the world, to the unbelieving. He will always convict them. You are in sin. Hello? Kaya napapansin niyo po ba may isang pagka ayaw ng iba sumama sa church? I don't, 
I don't really agree na kaya ayaw nilang sumama sa church is because they don't want you, they don't want them coming to church. But some of the people that doesn't want to go to church, I, I cannot generalize this, but this is my reason before, nung hindi po ako masyado naniniwala sa aking ama, the reason why I don't want to go here, nung ako po hindi pa pumana ng palataya when I was still a, 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 a teenager, because I feel that I am so dirty and I feel that I'm sitting with holy people. Hello? Tama? Kaya nga sabi ng iba, wag mo muna ako nayahan, di pa ako handang tanggalin ng bisyo. Why? Amen. It's a joke, but it's true. They are being convicted by the Holy Spirit that their life is not right. Hello? Because you cannot face the presence of God if you are not right. Nobody can stand in the presence of God if you are not right. So what is the role of the Holy Spirit to the world? Condemn them that they are in sin. So I realize that it is not the work of the preacher to condemn them. Hello? Doon ko po napagtanto na hindi ko pala trabaho na ipamuka sa kanila. They already know that and that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I don't need to mess with the ministry that is not given to me. It's the job of the Spirit. And that's I realized that God, I just have to cooperate. It's not my business to condemn them. It's the Holy Spirit already working in them. Kaya may, may maririnig kang testimony na napakasamang tao pero hindi nila, hindi nila maintindihan kung ba't sila lumapit sa Diyos. Why? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Kaya nga, doon ko po na-realize, pa, Panginoon, pa, paano po sila na makakakilala? Panginoon, kung hindi namin uusigin sila. And God begin to rebuke me. You have the wrong approach. You don't tell the world that they are in sin. You tell them that I love them. Amen. Hello? They, it's my job telling them that they are in sin, but it's your job to tell them that there is love. Hello? Amen? At the moment I realize that I stop preaching, God hates you. No, I start preaching now, God loves you. Hello? Amen? Amen? Why is the people attracted to Jesus when He comes? Bakit po na-attract ang tao kay Jesus in the gospel, if you know the Bible? Why people are attracted to Jesus and not attracted to the perishy? Because when they go to the Pharisee, they will, the Pharisee will always say, you are a sinner. But when they come to Jesus, there is grace. There is love. Come, repent. God loves you. Many are the followers of Jesus, but nobody follows the Pharisee. Because the world already knows, because of the Holy Spirit, that they are in sin. But the world doesn't know today that the love of God is available for them. They just have to come to God. Hello? Amen? So that's verse 9. Now another job is in verse 10. Now he said, righteousness. I love this part. Another job of the Holy Spirit is He will tell us about righteousness and Amplified, describe or give the meaning of the word righteousness very nice and very clear here. And sabi sa verse 10, what is righteousness? Watch this. A brightness of heart and right standing with God. So meaning righteousness is not an action. It means you're in right standing with God. So without righteousness, you do not have a right standing in the presence of God. Amen? Kaya nga po, pansinin po natin, let's go back, law first mention, the book of Genesis. When Adam and Eve committed disobedience, they left now the presence of God. Where did Adam and Eve go? The Bible said they are hiding now. Amen? But before na kumagawa po nila yung kasalanan na yun, they can they can come to God anytime. I believe they can talk to God like what we are doing right now. Pero nung sila po'y na-separate sa Diyos, parang nagbago lahat. They cannot Look at God anymore. Kaya nung dumating ang Diyos, 
And sabi ng Bible, God now began to walk in the cool breeze of the night and He said, Adam, where are you? And I believe na no, sinabi po ni, ng Diyos na Adam, where are you? God is not saying, I can't see you. You know, God is an all-knowing God. He knows everything. He sees everything. Amen? But the reason why God says now to Adam, where are you? Because right there, God cannot look at you. Why? Because you lose your righteousness right there when you give it up. Amen? Kaya hindi na po makatingin ang Diyos sa kay Adan because he lost his righteousness. And the same way with Adam, he has no power now to understand that he still have this right standing with God. Kaya sa po'y nagtatago. Paano po nakalabas si Adan sa kanyang pinagkakataguan? Ang sabi ng Diyos, that's the first also uh, murder happened in the Bible. He get a lamb, he kill it, and he get the, the skin of the lamb and he covered Adam. At doon lamang po nakalabas si Adan at doon po siya nagpaliwanag. Because if God would not cover you with His righteousness, you cannot stand in the presence of God. Hello? Amen? Kaya sabi po ng verse 9 o verse 10, in righteousness, what will the Holy Spirit do to you? Pag dumating po siya, you don't, you don't belong to verse 9 because you're not part of the world. Nagawa na po ng banal na Espiritu trabao trabaho, you, He has convicted you with sin. That's why you get to Jesus, right? Amen. Amen. Now, when you are now in Jesus, sabi ng verse 10, what will the Holy Spirit now do to you? He will always remind you that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hello? Amen. Kaya nakakatawag na po tayo. Pwede na tayo kaya nga sabi now, before we just know God as God. But the Bible said as sabi ni Paul, now this time, it's, just, it's not God, just God, but you can now call Him Abba, Father. Hello? Amen? So ano po ang trabaho ng banal na Espiritu? He will remind you that because of Jesus, you are righteous. And because you know that you are righteous, anytime you can come to the presence of God, because now, God doesn't see you as a sinner, but God sees His Son in you. And when He sees His Son, He sees His righteousness in you. And lastly, and we're about to end and close, in verse 11, ang sabi po rito sa huli, another job of the Holy Spirit and about judgment. Because the ruler, now it talks about Satan, evil genius of this world. Look at what Amplified say, evil genius. It really bothers me. Amen. Bakit po? Dahil ang sabi po ng Biblia, evil, genius, Christians, ignorant. <laughs> Hindi niyo na ako, ha? Gusto ko sana medyo mapaganong kayo, pero mo hindi niyo na ako, ha? Evil, genius. Pero maraming Kristiyano, genius po ba? Ignorant. Right? Amen. Kaya sabi po dito, that's why we need to get into the Word because we are safe in the Word of God. And sabi sa verse 11 about judgment because the ruler, evil genius, prince of this world, what is his name? Sabi ng Amplified, his name is Satan. What will the Holy Spirit do? Judge is judge and condemn and sentence already is passed upon him. I like this part also. The Holy Spirit will always remind the believers you don't need to be afraid of Satan. Why? Satan is already condemned. Amen. He is already defeated. Satan is under your feet. Amen. That's why we are called victors in Christ. Amen? Kaya yan po ang trabaho ng banal na Espiritu. Every day he'll remind you, you're righteous. Every day he'll remind you, Son, you don't need to fear Satan. Why? It's already a defeated foe. 2,000 years ago, your Jesus has defeated him publicly and openly by hanging himself on the cross. At pag nandun ka po sa ganong kalagayan, ano nangyayari sa'yo? Makes you feel secure because your faith is getting higher and higher every day. Let's stand up tayo pong lahat ay tumayo. I hope you get something tonight. Hallelujah! Let's praise God tonight. Hallelujah. Pasalamatan po natin ng Panginoon. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We love you. He's the restorer. 
Hallelujah, He restores everything. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Hallelujah. Remind your people every day we are righteous. We are righteous. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Remind your people each day, Lord. They don't need to be afraid of the devil anymore because we are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name, Lord. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. O Diyos, amang makapangyarihan sa lahat. May every words that they hear tonight be implanted and embedded in their hearts, Panginoon. Tulungan mo po sila na lagi nila itong maalala. Let the operation and the power of the Holy Spirit be at work in them, Panginoon. Now that they knew, Panginoon, now that they have understand the purpose of the Holy Spirit in their life, Holy Spirit, do your ways in their life always remind them that they are always righteous in your sight that sickness has to go sickness has to flee poverty has to come out from the righteous people Panginoon dahil sinabi mo po sa iyo salita that righteous never lack any good thing Panginoon at pagpalain mo po ang mga anak mong ito Panginoon na nari dito na gabi-gabi dinadala mo pinalalakas mo pinatatatag mo pinatitibay mo Panginoon thank you God for your word at salamat din, Panginoon, we hear the good news today that we do not need to fear anymore Satan because he's already judged, condemned, and defeated. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa iyong kabutihan. May ingat na binabalik po namin sa iyo. Ang pinakamataas na papuri, ang parangal at ang pagsamba ay para sa iyo lamang. Lahat po na may hiningay nagsabi ng malakas na. Amen.